For the ones who get it done, the most important part is the one you need now. And the best partner is the one who can deliver. That's why millions of maintenance and repair pros trust Granger, Because we have professional-grade supplies for every industry, even hard-to-find products. And we have same-day pickup and next-day delivery on most orders. But most importantly, we have an unwavering commitment to help keep you up and running. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. All new doctors take the Hippocratic Oath to help their patients and never harm them. But Dr. Wes Ely admits that early in his career as an intensive care specialist, he forgot about that and focused mainly on medical procedures. Ely says he dehumanized the very people he had vowed to care for, sometimes causing more pain and trauma than the original illness. Earlier in my life, before I was a gray-haired ICU doctor, I was enamored with and excited about the skill set I had obtained in training to place central lines and put people on life support and manage ventilators and that sort of thing. And, and I think that I had a distance between myself and the patient and tended to dehumanize them in my mind, subconsciously, of course, it was a critical behavior pattern that did not lift up these people and provide really the support and love that they needed to completely heal for holistic healing. Today, Ely is a professor of medicine and associate director of aging research at Vanderbilt University. He writes about his change of heart and new approach to healing in his book, Every Deep Drawn Breath a critical care doctor on healing, recovery, and transforming medicine in the ICU. I now really value that component of my being at the bedside with these people more than I do the procedures, the beeps and the buzzers. I completely cherish looking in their eyes, holding their hands, taking care of them when they're suffering, and being present with them, not feeling sorry for them, but being with them, and that's the big difference. Ely wasn't unique in his focus on the beeps and buzzers. ICU doctors and nurses around the world depend on technology to care for their patients. But Ely believes they also rely too heavily on the practices of patient sedation and immobilization. These two methods have become standards of care because they're the easiest and quickest way to stabilize patients on life support. But Ely says prolonged sedation and immobilization often causes PTSD and post-intensive care syndrome, also known as PICS. And this syndrome is one of acquired dementia acquired PTSD and depression, and then physical disability. And we find that about one-third of people get new depression and about one in five get post-traumatic stress disorder. And they go on to have profound nightmares and inability to sleep, and their life is really dramatically changed. Just over 10 years ago, Ely visited ICUs in 40 countries. He says sedation and immobilization were standard practices in all of them but one. Denmark was the exception. Ely returned home determined to change the way he practiced medicine. He spent the next decade creating an approach to care he calls the ABCDEF bundle. It's a bundle based on humanization and touch. And what we do is every day, we just like a pilot would check a safety checklist prior to getting on an airplane and flying you across the country. We at every bedside run through this ABCDEF bundle. We wake the patient up. We see how they are doing, make sure their pain is covered if they're in pain, and then we test them to see if they can come off the breathing machine. We test them for delirium. We get them out of the bed. We involve the family at their bedside, and those are essentially the steps, turning off the sedation, paying attention to who they are in the bed. If they're delirious, we run through a few steps to take care of their delirium and get their brain back on so they can speak to loved ones and engage with the people they value the most in life. And uh, to me, it just gets me back to the human that I'm supposed to be caring for. Ely's bundle approach, which he's taught in dozens of hospitals around the U.S., has improved survival rates for more than 20,000 patients, reducing their length of stay in the ICU and preventing readmission. But as the nation was overwhelmed with COVID-19, Ely was appalled to see a backslide into the old ways and an increase in patient isolation. No families allowed by the bedside patients dying alone. And worse, he saw doctors taking a judgmental attitude towards patients who chose to remain unvaccinated. Even Ely admits he wasn't immune to this stance. When I was with them, I was allowing judgment to come in, 
my pride flared. And just to be quite honest, I don't think I was really showing these people respect. And I was making a lot of assumptions about where they were coming from. And that does not serve them well. And it also leaves me vulnerable to burnout. I really think that the antidote to the burnout, for me, I have found that to be this physical and mental connection with people, holding hands, kneeling at their bedside. Ms. Smith, I will not leave you. I know you're scared. Our team will stay with you, regardless of how, for example, they came to get COVID, whether they're vaxxed, unvaxxed. I just need to see this person as an entire human being and lift them up and show them dignity and respect. Ely believes that COVID was a wake-up call to get back to practices that work. We know that PPE works now. We know this can work. And I'll turn around a question to you. I wonder how many people, and we'll never know the answer to this question, but I wonder how many people died for a loneliness, lack of a loved one being there, and just losing hope, a lack of desire to keep going if you don't have a loved one there whispering in your ear, holding your hand, and helping you. So I do think that the once draconian no visitation policies we created at the beginning, partially out of fear and partially out of need for safety, they can be adjusted dramatically to allow much more involvement of families at the bedside and should be. Each hospital can figure out how they can accomplish that. And if for some reason family absolutely cannot be allowed into the ICU, Ely says at the very least the patient must have an iPad or cell phone close by where family members can talk to their loved ones, even if the patient is unconscious. Ely hopes the patient stories in his book will inspire hospital administrators to change their ICU practices and visitation policies as a step towards bringing humanity back into the ICU. You can read more inspiring stories of hope in Ely's book, Every Deep Drawn Breath, which is available now. You can find more information about Dr. Wes Ely and all our guests by visiting our website, radiohealthjournal.org. For more behind the scenes, follow Radio Health Journal on Facebook, Instagram, and X. This segment originally aired at December 2021 and was written by Polly Hansen. Our lead producer is Kristen Farah. Our production manager is Jason Dickey. I'm Greg Johnson. Coming up next week on Radio Health Journal. People who have been lifelong nail biters who are really biting down by the cuticle area, sometimes their nails are very wide and it's very hard to reverse that. The long-term effects of nail biting. But first, the technology that's taking over operating rooms. It is life-saving and it really has been a game changer in our approach to this treatment. All that and more on Radio Health Journal. I'm Greg Johnson, host of Radio Health Journal. If you enjoy listening to Radio Health Journal, you'll also like our sister show, Viewpoints, which covers a wide array of topics from education to history to the environment. Here's a preview of what they're covering this week on Viewpoints. When I look at intelligent systems on machines, the consciousness is already kind of there. Are artificial intelligence systems already conscious? Experts can't seem to agree. Then... I've done a painting of... Bin Laden when he was captured and killed, and that was a big cover. Speaking with the man behind some of the most prominent illustrations of our time, I'm Marty Peterson. And I'm Gary Price. These stories in depth this week on your public affairs magazine, Viewpoints. Listen to Viewpoints on your favorite radio station, iTunes and Stitcher. And that's Radio Health Journal for this week. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to learn more. And check Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify for a library of past programs. Plus, you'll always find previous segments and information about our guests at RadioHealthJournal.org. Join us again next week for another edition of Radio Health Journal.